Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video we're going to talk about linear equations that have multiple solutions or don't have any solutions. So in the previous videos, we've seen equations that we call conditional equations, and that means that they're true under certain conditions, namely for a specific value of x or the variable, they are true and we're trying to figure out what that one value is. We're going to take a look at two different types today that are called contradictions and identities. And we'll see that the two types have something in common, but there's also definitely some differences for them as well. All right, so I've got an equation, one half times the quantity six X plus 20, equals x plus 4 plus 2 times the quantity x plus 3. And so I know that I need to simplify both sides first, and I've got some distributive multiplication to do. In the last video, we talked about clearing the equation of fractions, which I could definitely do when I look at that 1 half on the left-hand side. However, when I look inside the parentheses, 1 half is going to be multiplied by both 6 and 20, even numbers. They're going to simplify to be whole numbers anyway, so I'm going to be able to avoid having to clear the fractions. It's going to happen anyway. So I'm going to begin by distributing. 1 half times 6x, 1 half times 6 is 3, so that's 3x plus 1 half times 20, that's 10, equals the x plus 4 I just copied down because they're not part of any distributive multiplication, but I do have to distribute the 2 into that second set of parentheses. So 2 times x is 2x, plus 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. Distri distributing, done. Now I've got some like terms on the right-hand side. I've got an x and a 2x to combine, and I have a 4 and a 6 to combine. Let's do that. The left side is 3x plus 10. The right side, x plus 2x is 3x, plus 4 plus 6 is 10. And right here, you should start to get an idea that something unusual is happening because the left side and the right side are identical. This kind of an equation is called an identity because any time we, uh, any value we would substitute in for x, the left side and the right side are identical and it's going to be a solution. Now, if you didn't catch this and you're kind of on autopilot, the next step in solving this would be to get all the variables to one side. So I'm going to subtract 3x from the right and also from the left. And when I do that, on the left-hand side, 3x minus 3x is 0. That leaves me just 10. On the right side, 3x minus 3x is still 0. That leaves me just 10 there as well. And I'm left with uh, an equation that has no variables in it. And that's how I know that I have an unusual equation. It's either going to be a contradiction or an identity. This one's an identity because this resulting equation is true. That's a true statement. 10 equals 10 no matter what x is. And so we, we say that this is an identity and any real number is a solution. So the solution set is the set of all real numbers, which we write with that notation, the r with the extra back. So if the variables disappear and you're left with a true statement, that's an identity. The set of all real numbers is your solution set. Let's take a look at the problem listed as number 12. I'm going to begin by distributing again. I've got negative 6 times the quantity 2x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply negative 6 by both of those terms. Then I've got minus 3 times the quantity x minus 4. I'm going to distribute negative 3 into that second set of parentheses. On the right-hand side, I just have negative 15x plus 1. Nothing to change there at all. So let's start distributing. Negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x. Negative 6 times positive 1, that's negative 6, so I write minus 6. Negative 3 times x, that's negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 4, that's positive 12. And on the right side, I still have negative 15x plus 1. Time to combine some like terms on the left-hand side of the equation. I've got a negative 12x and a negative 3x. Those combine to be negative 15x. Negative 6 plus 12 on the left side, two like terms there. 
negative 6 plus 12 is a positive 6, so I write plus 6, and that's equal to negative 15x plus 1. So this is telling me that negative 15x plus 6 is the same as negative 15x plus 1. The same, uh, the same number, adding 6 and 1 gives me the same answer. That seems a little fishy. Uh, if I'm going through the motions of solving this, the next thing I would do is add 15x to both sides to try to combine, to collect all the variable terms on the same side of the equation. But 15, negative 15x and 15x combined to be 0, those both basically disappear, and I'm left with the equation 6 equals 1. This is false. This is what we call a contradiction. 6 will never equal 1 no matter what value we pick for x. So this is never true. This has no solution. And the way we write the solution set is with this symbol, the circle with that diagonal slash through it. This is called the null set or the empty set. And again, that means that this equation has no solutions to it. So when the variables disappear, in the first problem, we were left with a true statement. That's an identity. The solution set is the set of all, e, all real numbers. In the second problem, we were left with a statement that was false. 6 equals 1. That's not true. That's a contradiction, and that means your equation has no solutions to it. All right. In the next video, we'll talk about literal equations, which is where we solve an equation for one variable in terms of other variables in the same equation.